Friday, 30 days remain. Well, it's that time of year again, No, that November is back. You see, with my family, it's a huge competition completely ran by mom to see who can go the longest without busting that sweet, sweet walnut. Normally, I'm not too good at it. Last year, I was out of the competition pretty early on, but it wasn't my fault. Holly decided to upload her summer pics on Instagram when I was super stiffy. <clears throat> Jesus, we're already off to a good start. But this year, I need to win this because the stakes are higher than ever. Normally, the winner, which is always Manny, obviously, gets to pick out something of their choice. That's actually how Manny got the pig. I made up the whole fair contest thing so Amulet would let me publish. However, this year, Mom changed the prize after the shit the pig got us over the past year. Instead, she's giving whoever wins this year's No Nut November the infinite walnut pass, giving the person the right to unlimited walnuts with no consequences. If anyone is getting that pass, it's going to be me. We've already started this competition since today is November 1st. I'm telling you, it's going to be a long month, especially when Thanksgiving rolls around and mom ups the game, but in the end, it's all going to be worth it to jerk the chicken off to Holly's bikini pics whenever I please, thanks to that pass. The only person I'm worried about is Manny, honestly, because I never seen him walnut before, and part of me says he doesn't even know what busting a walnut is, but I don't care. Infinite walnut pass, here I come. Bring it on, Mom. Saturday, 29 days remain. Like every year, Dad is the first one out. The fucker didn't even last one damn night. But I understand his pain when you're sleeping next to the person that's trying to make you walnut. You can only go so far until you give away. There's something messed up about that guy. I've heard rumors from Manny that he's been getting it on with Miss Jefferson. But what does he know? Anyways, I've been holding off pretty well so far. Haven't had any urges to bust. Heck, I haven't even gotten, any, gotten a stiffy yet. I blocked Holly and a few other girls on Instagram, but like they're going to care. Half of them have boyfriends anyway. Tuesday, 26 days remain. So far, so good. Still no cravings to not. I've been keeping my distance from Holly because you never know if she's going to wear something that turns you turns on the stiff plug besides she already got by Bryce as a boyfriend and I've moved on from her Rama isn't happy with mom about this whole no no, no not November content competition as she says it's a dumb thing to be holding a contest for something the boys shouldn't be doing in the first place because beating your meat is a sin you need to shut the fuck up yeah, right. Even though I kind of see where grandma's coming from, keep in mind she paid $50 to fix her Wi-Fi and all he had to do was reset the router. Anyways, Terrence and Uncle, Uncle Joe are out as both of them busted over the weekend. Don't know how, but they just did. At least Dad feel, is feeling better knowing he's not the only one out anymore. Monday, 19 days remain. Well, just had a close call at school today. I forgot we started our swimming unit today because of course we did. And how? And Holly just happened to wear a swimsuit that got me on. Raymond thought it would be really funny to laugh at my stiff, stiff and stack. But let's not forget his mom has stage 3 boob or breast cancer, or so I didn't take it too seriously. Thankfully, I didn't walnut. Can't say the same about Fregley. And just when I thought Fregley was weird in the books, he's even weird in the, in the fan fiction books. My, my up and at him wasn't going away. 
away, however, and I just had to live with it. Trust me, it isn't easy to be walking around school knowing that knowing that you have that prosthetic leg sticking out. But it will be all worth it in the end when I get that pass. Friday, 15 days remain. Holy shit, I can't believe what just happened today. Manny is out. He freaking walnut it today. According to him, someone was playing a vacuum cleaner at preschool today and put the tube up to Manny's slim slam, causing him to walnut. He's been trying to tell mom that it wasn't his fault and that he shouldn't be out, but according to mom, a nut is a nut. No exceptions. So Manny is out. That makes it easier for me. I was conducting a plan to make him walnut involving some Fortnite stuff. But I guess I don't have to now. Manny has been taking this loss very hard. He's been dragging Tangy around for the past two hours. And he looks like he's about to snap. Part of me feels kind of feel feels bad for him. But then again, this is no not November. It's everyone's game. Damn shame, really. Yeah, even Manny looks like he's about to pull some school shooter type shit. Sunday, 13 days remaining. Manny offed himself. He is fucking finished. We saw we were getting dinner prepared when we heard a loud ass bang from upstairs. We bolted up to Manny's room since he was the only one up there at the time and found his dead corpse found his corpse next to dad's shotgun he blew off his head it was so gruesome i don't even want to attempt to draw it i was sick to my stomach seeing all that blood everywhere he left a death note but i could barely read it but at the end he wrote free you megan you plooby dad was upset the pig was literally crying but mom was expressionless saying that sometimes no not november is like that Seriously? You don't give a shit about your son dying? Boy, this took a turn for the worse. Grandma and a, f and a lot of others in the family are absolutely furious at mom, saying that this has gone too far and that, they sh that this competition should be called off. Your son just committed suicide, Susan. It's time to call off this damn competition. I already know mom is just going to shrug it off. Besides, man, he wasn't a title little shit anyways. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. The pig is out. The motherfucking pig walnutted. He used Manny's corpse as a fleshlight or or some shit. I don't even don't even I don't know right now. Afterwards, he tried eating Manny's um, slim slam. I figured that out because he was walking around weird and that little shit puked up that several two inch frankfurter. It's fucked up, I know. Anyways, there's still two weeks left and at the moment seven people are out. Dad, Uncle Joe, Terrence, Malcolm who got bu busted walnutting to a Peppa Pig, Rule 34, and Benji who, who got it on with the stuffed giraffe. <laughs> stuffed giraffe. Manny and now the pig. However, once Thanksgiving rolls around, that list is going to double, maybe even triple. This just got dark real fast. I've been talking about a ton who's still who's out, but there's a ton of shockers on who's still in. One of the biggest is Uncle Gary. I'm impressed with him going this long without uh, walnutting. Especially after that incident outside the local elementary school last winter. At the moment, he currently has a restraining order on every public school, school in the state. Which is probably why he's still in. I hate to say it, but now that Manny is out of the way, I think Uncle Gary is my biggest competition now. Since he can't legally be around little kids. Grandpa is also still in this competition, but he's a piece of shit when it comes comes to N N. He's the kind that sneaks up and gives you an up and down all around job when you when you're at least expecting it. He gets someone every year. That's how I lost three years ago. Grandpa, you jackass. <laughs> Basically, when Thanksgiving rolls around, stay as far away from him as possible. 
and always check your back. Roderick let his guard down last year and got sabotaged by Grandpa. He was so pissed afterwards. The last one that really needs to be talked about is Byron. He is the unluckiest of the whole family as he finished runner-up more than anyone else. And every year he's starting to look like he's more and more likely to snap and go off. Last year he blew it at Grandma's from Thanksgiving while he was second and took out his rage on Aunt Cakey, putting her in the hospital for a few weeks. Oh my goodness, now they got fucking family abuse up in this book. I can go on and on talking about who's still in and out, but I'll simplify it with a handy chart. So there we have Uncle Gary, can't be around children, obviously. Then we got some guy with the glasses with the Squidward nose. Then we got the one dude with the glasses. No, this is taking too long. Let's skip to the next scene. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving, so there's there will be a lot less competition to worry about because according to the older men, it's the hardest part of NNN. While others might get it up, might get a stiffy when mom does what she does, I don't I don't find it sexy at all. So I don't really have to, anything to worry about. Friday, eight days remain. Boy, I'm so lucky to be alive. Boy, do I have a lot to talk about after yesterday's shit show. I can just spill the tea, but I think you all saw it on the news. Breaking news. 23 dead in domestic shooting. Plainview News 15. Long story short, me, Roger, and Uncle Gary are the last ones in contention and everyone else is dead. Morbid. Well, everyone except dad, mom, and grandma because they got out perfectly fine. Remember when I said that it looked like Byron was going to snap? Well, that's exactly what happened. It all started out, started like normal. We arrived at grandma's house with our food and headed in. And of course, mom tries to spike the food with drugs to make the men, men super stiffy for the main event. But you can't really feel like eating knowing that there's a crushed up up an up pill in the mashed potatoes your mom made for you. And when we got inside, something seemed off. And then I realized something. Uncle Gary wasn't there. Honestly, I can't blame him. There's really no rule against this. But mom said that he was he was a pussy for not showing up to the dinner. Sucks I was forced to go. Everyone else was there, however, on However, even Aunt Veronica and Uncle Lawrence was there too, which was pretty surprising. After some chit chat, we had dinner. Boy, does that stiff power shit hit you hard. I nearly snapped after I finished eating. Fortunately for me, I didn't c- couldn't I didn't couldn't really say the same about about Uncle Arthur though. Poor bastard, walnutted right on the stuffing on Roger's plate. That's fucking gross. After the din after the dinner, mom said it was time for the main event. I heard grandma groan because we all knew what was going to happen next. All of us men went into the living room and mom locked the door behind us. We aren't getting out until mom says we are. But again, I have nothing to worry about because I don't find my mom sexy at all. Which is weird as shit. She takes her shirt and pants off and starts to twerk on the coffee table as sexy music blasts on the stereo. Hey, yo, what the fuck? What the hell? If you think I'm drawing any of the stuff I saw, please go say, go get some mental help. Mom tried to encourage the other women, which were in the room, to do the same thing, which led to a large groan of annoyance because of how stupid this entire thing was. Even though I wasn't turned on by any of this bullshit, turns out others did, as a few gave away towards her performance. And that's when it all went south. Byron was doing a good job holding it in and was focusing on trying not to give in to mom's temptations when grandpa, when grandpa struck again and got him when he at least expected it. Poor Byron was done and it was all grandpa's fault. But of course, mom's rule 
of no of no exceptions meant he was out a lot earlier than he normally does too. Rampo went on to taunt Byron for the fact that he lasted longer than him this time, and that's when he says, "Man, you really suck at keeping it in your pa- keeping it in your pants." After all these years of losing, after all these years of frustration and rage build up, Byron finally snapped. He pulled out two guns and killed Grandpa, and then he shoved Mom off the coffee table and screamed, If I can't have that pass, no one can! <laughs> he opened fire at everyone. He, we were all screaming and yelling at Mom to unlock the door as blood was spewing everywhere. However, Mom refused to open it until my performance is over. Luckily, Uncle Travis kicked down the door just as he was shot in the back three times and died. Me and Roger booked it. Turning around, I saw Byron pin down Malcolm and blew off his head with the shotgun. I felt like I was in Vietnam again. Wait, Greg was in Vietnam? Wait, when was I in Vietnam? On the bright side, Dad and Roger were okay and were right behind me. So glad to say that we weren't dead, but Dad was shot in the ass, so he was screaming in pain. Ah, son of a... We bursted out of the front door and got into the car. Thank God Dad Dad had the keys and not Mom. Otherwise, we would have been fried, toasted, and, you know, smothered. We backed out of the Grandma's driveway and drove off. Out, out the side mirror, I could see Uncle Larry getting shot in the head and collapsed to the ground. Poor bastard. The police would eventually arrive, and that stupid fuck Byron thought he could take... Take on the nine cops with two pistols. All I heard is he only shot, he only fired two shots before me turned into red mist with 54 and dying instantly. On the news, police chief Roger Tubbs said it was the most gruesome scene he had ever seen. Leading it all, leading it, it was all over the news and made national headlines as the worst act of domestic terrorism. In American history. Despite this, I'm pretty sure Mom still isn't going to call off this competition because that's how in it in an end goes sometimes. But in all seriousness, it's all gone too far. Monday, five days remain. Grandma is absolutely furious about this entire fiasco. She's been living with us for the for the weekend, and since her house is still a crime scene, and she's been giving Mom both barrels. Grandma's called mom a disgrace to the entire Halfley family and blaming her for all of this murder in her house. She forced mom to call off the competition or she'll call the cops on her. So she did the right thing and ended the competition. Just kidding. She stabbed grandma to death. What the hell man? This has gotten too dark. She said that that old bitch deserved it because she always spewed bullshit and never actually appreciated the benefits to this competition. She's currently in the basement disposing the body. It smells so bad down there, I'm not even going to bother questioning what's going on. Wednesday, three days remain. Well, Uncle Gary is out and in prison. Turns out his car broke down in front of the playground and after holding it all in for so long, he finally snapped. And just like that, the Hefleys are in the news for the second time in two weeks. Jesus Christ, like, first there's a domestic shooting and now there's just Uncle Gary just literally chasing, literally just chasing kids and shit like that. Jesus Christ, man arrested for catching six children. Plainview News, 15. Anyways. It's been an absolute nightmare for me and Roderick, as we're the last two in contention. Mom decided to pay a visit yesterday at school in her stripper clothes, which meant I thought it was the end for me and I'll get bullied for the rest of my life. Getting turned on yet, sexy bear? Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, that's when Fregley decided to cause a scene with Mom. And we got a a live show in class. Yeah, you got yourself a triple X live live show in class, all right. 
Sprigley was severely bullied throughout the rest of the day being called prostitute boy. But I think they should be a bit more careful because we all know what happens when someone gets bullied in an American school. <laughs> it ain't that true enough. Anyway, his dad pulled me to the side this morning explaining some important information. He said that since it's the final 72 hours of this competition, she's locking us in the house so we can't escape until there's a clear winner. And she'll do all her best to make me and Roderick wa Walnut. I initially thought that w that was a bit overkill, but he was right. When I was going to rallies to play a new Twisted Wizards DLC, the door wasn't just locked, it was welded shut. Thankfully, I turned around just before Mom tried to pin me to the door and do her dirty work, and I managed to get away. Thursday, two days remain. Roger came into the room today and he looked all shaken up. I asked him what happened and he said he was taking a nap when he woke up to mom trying to jerk his chicken and his um like um really stiff like really stiff spaghetti noodle. He he was very close to busting but he didn't. But didn't. Knowing that, now knowing that, I'm going to make sure I keep my door locked at night. Hopefully she doesn't try to sneak through the windows or some shit like that. As much as I want to try to sabotage Roderick for the win, I feel like that would be a douche move. Ever since the shooting at Grandma's, I've been a lot more passive. Okay, this is, okay, this whole scene right here is probably going to have YouTube knocking on my door. Who gives a shit? Saturday, 24 hours remain. Well, here we are. Here, well, here we finally are. November 30th. Gotta say, it's been, it feels like it's been an eternity since this all began. Almost like eight months or so. Mom has been getting in my way all day, completely nude. I have no idea why she thinks that I'll get turned on with that shiny middle-aged raisin. I'm reading the Bible after this. But whatever helps her sleep at night. It's honestly starting to get annoying and Roderick agrees. Just before lunch, she tried to grab my junk, but I punched her in the face and ran away. I'm currently locked upstairs in the bathroom, hoping this will all blow over soon. Six hours remain. I don't know how long I've been up there, but it's getting dark outside, so I think it's almost the end of the day. I have no idea where Roderick is, but I think it's clear to go downstairs. When I get downstairs, Dad is in the kitchen. I asked where Mom is, and he said that she's downstairs with Roderick. That's when I heard a bloodthirsty scream. It was Roderick. A few seconds later, I heard Mom. Me wondering... About Roderick became a side thought when she said from the basement that I won, won N and N. So Greg won N and N. I can't believe it! I won. She told me to come downstairs to claim my pass. I hurried down to the basement. Dad was screaming at me as I went down, but I don't care. Greg, no, it's a trap. I can get downstairs and peek in Roderick's room. I can see the the stains on his on his blankets, so it's official. He's knocked out of his bed face down, so that must be quite quite the waterfall. Mom congratulated me and said how well I done I've done. I asked her for the past, but she says she, she said not yet. That's that there is one more contender, and that's when I got I was confused. I asked who it could be, and then and then she started to take her pants off. I was confused about what she was go what she was doing until everything started to add up. And just when I figured it out, she revealed her sling slam, her noodle, her spaghetti noodle, her oversized pickle, her friggin' log. <laughs> Holy, holy hell on a stick. Shit. My mom is a dude. 
a dude with breast implants. My mom said that she's not Susan Heffley, that she's infamous serial killer and gay porn star, Sammy Twitch, Twitch Nick? <laughs> I can't tell or rather that was just disturbing or just awfully corny on the, on the antagonist's name. I heard that name before. He, he murdered his entire family to get their valuables. The feds assumed he was killed in the boat crash in 2002, but it turns out it was my mom the whole fucking time. And I'm shaking right now. She told me that she killed Manny and actually hired Byron as a sat sin a few years ago to murder everyone else when the time was just right. I knew I I was next and tried to book it, but next thing you know, she or er, he tripped me and, and then smashed my head with a hand. With I mean, not hand, fucking pan. I don't know how long, know how long I was knocked out, long. but when I woke up, I was strapped to the bed. I looked at the clock at 10.30 p.m. This is the end. As Sammy walks into the room, he's about to ready to finish me off. I know once he's done, he's going to kill me. Man, these, man, all these pictures and stuff like that is bound to get YouTube knocking on my door. I can still hear his words as he approached me. Enjoy the last cock and ball torture of your pathetic life, Gregory. He began to give me, um, the Ultra Suck 3000. I've been holding it in for so long, it didn't take me long long for me to already feel like I'm about to bust but I tried my hardest to break free but he tied me down tight after all this time I come so far I've only I only got my fraudulent mom to beat now and I'm not accepting defeat that easily <laughs> oh my lord that's wrong that's so wrong that is so wrong that is so wrong after I kick Sammy right in the nuts, I uh, I broke free and booked it. We were in a secret room in the basement, so before I went upstairs to wake up Roderick and tell him we need to get out of here, I already know that I can't stay. He's absolutely going to try to kill me. When I went to Roderick's room, I was horrified. He was he was dead. Sammy must have gouged Roderick's fucking eyes out. I couldn't stay pinned in here. I could hear Sa Sammy's footsteps, so I bolted out of the room. It looks like I'm on my own here. I have no idea where Dad is, but I wouldn't be surprised if he was dead too. The doors were welded shut, so I couldn't get out through the doors. Next thing you know, Sammy was coming up out of the basement with a knife. I'm sick of your shit, Gregory. There was no other way out. I had no other choice, but... To do what I did. It was painful as hell. But what else was I supposed to do? <laughs> Bleeding all over the place. Shit's getting all over my journal. But that doesn't matter right now. It's super cold out. And I and it doesn't help. I'm ass naked out here. Forgot to mention. We're in a blizzard warning right now. But that doesn't matter. I checked behind me. And Sammy was right on my trail. Waving a knife in the air. The adrenaline is really helping me escape. I never ran this fast before. It's been about 45 minutes now, and I have no idea where I am. I just ran in one direction and booked it. I see a sign coming up, so maybe that will help me. It was Hard Scrabble Farms, close for the season. Hard Scrabble's Farms, that's it. The maintenance shit. The place is abandoned since they are closed for the season, but I bet the shed would be easier to get into. Grandpa taught me how to lockpick when I was 10, and I can't believe that it's going to actually be useful for once. I get inside the shed and I hide in the corner. I assumed it was 10 minutes to midnight. I'm trying, I'm still trying to process everything that happened so far. He killed Manny. Byron's an assassin. Why is Sammy doing this? For money? For revenge? My entire world has turned upside down, but before I can get my head straight, I heard something that made my heart drop. Hello, Gregory. Holy shit, he found me. How did he find me? I tried to 
sit. I tried to sit as quietly as possible, but Sammy knew I was there and the bro and broke the window open with his knife. This is it. The end of my life. I'm trapped. As he approached me, knife in hand, he said what I thought would be the last words I hear in my life. See you on the other side, you disgraceful raspberry plastic tickle barrel virgin. And I have to think fast because my back is against the wall. I'm freezing and I'm covered with cuts. So I won't be able to wrestle my way out of this. That's when I notice something in the barrel. An axe. I have no choice. I sprinted with all my strength I have left. Got the axe. And as soon as Sandy sprinted towards me, towards me screaming at the top of his lungs. I just killed my mom over a fucking nut pass. How does that sound? <laughs> I look at I look at her watch. I look at her watch. Twelve o'clock, December first. I from I won. I got the pass as I strut out of the shed. I turn around at Sammy's dead corpse, blood everywhere, and calmly say, "Checkmate, bitch." I can't be, I can't wait to finally use this nut pass. I finally been waiting forever. And now I'm going to use it. It's been going to be a great future for me. Yeah, I mean, the whole family's dead over a, a piece of card that's literally similar to the whole N-word pass. Yet, it's the nut pass. December. This is bullshit. I have no idea where I'm at. Or where I'm at and I'm freezing to death. I come all this way to get the pass. And I'm going to die before I get to use it? Of hypothermia? There's... There's nobody around for miles, and I can't feel my legs. I have no clothes on, and it's all snowy and windy out. I can't find the shed. Damn it, this is the end for me after all. I, I would have been better off getting shot by Byron at Grandma's. Grandma was right. This entire competition was a disaster from the start. And now look, my entire family is dead, and I'm about to die. I'm up against the tree right now and I've given up in accepting my fate even writing or even writing is a chore right now because my fingers are just numb I can already see the light I had a good life maybe I'll bust one fat fat walnut just one in all one final time I think I have enough strength that's gross I ain't reading no sense as well I'm off to see my family in heaven, and if Riley ever sees this, I will always, I was always, I was always, was trans for you. Trans for you. I love you, you magnificent poop This is a meteorologist in Rochester, New York, who lost his job after he used a racial slur on the air. When he insists was an unintentional slip of the tongue, happened last Friday. I want you to listen now, and I want you to be the judge for yourself. Watch this. To what I make out of Martin Luther King, King Jr. Park. So that set off a firestorm on social media. The mayor and the city council of Rochester to call for a trial, and after an internal investigation over the weekend, Chappelle was fired by WACC. Who joins me now from Rochester? Thank you, sir, uh, for joining us. So, all right, so before we get to the conversation, you, you, you said that, that this was unintentional. That's right. Explain to me, how so? Um, I mean, uh, the word that uh, many people thought they heard, um, you know, I, I, I don't know if I've ever said the word in my life, and I certainly know not in the last 20 years or so of my professional career. So it just wouldn't happen. Do you, um, you know that that is a slur that people use against Dr. King, right? And so you have since learned that. And, you know, um, you, I, I'm sure I've heard it, and I, I know of it certainly now. I know I've heard a lot about it. But at the time when I was mispronouncing his name, uh, Don, um, it, it was a mispronunciation. I could tell that I was fumbling his words a little bit. 
Uh, and the moment I realized that I was fumbling, I immediately put the emphasis on king, not knowing that uh, I had made a major error. I did what all of us can do. I, I moved on. Is that so? You know, we've been talking about the shows. I've been hearing people. They say, well, maybe he didn't intend to do it, but it's maybe it's something that people in the area or whatever call that part because they're trying to be funny or cute because they're racist. Have you ever heard that call that? No, never. All right. So I just want I wanted to get that out of the way. So that that was a good time because I on TV every night for two hours straight live. It is just me. And I have right. jumbled words before. I have said things I didn't even realize that I said. Uh, I have misspoken on the air. Um, and in the moment, you try not to draw attention to it. And as you say, you move on. Um, right. So is that? So what do you what do you say to that? Um, yeah. Well, um, I was not aware of any major error at all. I knew that there was a bit of a mispronunciation in there. Third, when I combined two words. Um, it's obviously a very unfortunate result, but uh, not coming to my consciousness. Yeah.